Hey! Yeah, so hi everyone, thanks for coming. Uh, my name is Ishtman Smozhansky and I'm not gonna burden you with that name anymore. So you can just call me Flaky. This is like basically 90% of the people uh, how they call me, or 99. Uh, so I'm going to talk about a lot of things and we might not be able to get to all kinds of uh, all the intricacies and all that. Uh, but feel free to ask me questions afterwards. So I'm gonna be talking about JavaScript I'm going to, of course, because this is JavaScript, you know. But we're also going to be talking about hardware and HTML5 games and a bunch of, you know, fixing the pipeline and getting some more people into, into JavaScript and programming or tech and IT in general. Uh, I have a few slides. Uh, there will be a link to the slides, so you can check it out. Check the links later if you're interested. Uh, so don't worry about the slides. This is this is one of those meetups and one of those days. I'm going to be mostly doing uh, live dem demoing stuff and trying to uh, deplete the kind of faith I have in the demo gods. So if something goes wrong or wrong, that is totally to be expected. Um, but feel free to ask me to show me stuff after afterwards uh, if we cannot get it to work. If you need any more info or stuff, they are going to be on the slides and links, so you can just check them out. Uh, so just a short intro, my name is Ishmael Smoczewski and Flocky is for short. You can tweet at me at SLSoftworks. And uh, I'm a JavaScript developer, I'm a JavaScript trainer, I teach front-end development. I'm from Budapest, Hungary. Uh, but most people, when they ask me these days, where am I based in? I usually just answer them, well, I still rent an apartment in Budapest. Uh, I'm here in Singapore, like in and out, uh, for the most of July, and I already uh, uh, been uh, given a short version of this talk at Hackver uh, last week, two, two weeks ago. Uh, I'm here by uh, enjoying the uh, the hospitality of my dear friends uh, Shin Mai and Shiny. Uh, who are the organizers of uh, uh, Build uh, uh, and Live.js uh, and the uh, Live. Uh, dot, uh, we build. What is that? We build. Yes, that is the one. Yeah, thank you. Uh, dot SG. I'm actually going to be giving a podcast uh, early uh, August. So if you are into that and want to know what is Rust or what is that about, feel free to join us. Uh, so I'm 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 enjoying the hospitality of these kind uh, kind souls, and they were the ones who suggested me to come here as well. So if it's terrible, blame them. Uh, <laughs> if it's nice, thank them for it. Um, I'm a Muslim tech speaker. This is the the, uh, the blue T-shirt and the yellow heart. Uh, I, I'm I'm a Muslim, by the way. I, I dropped off some stickers. If you're into that kind of game, uh, you know, get some stickers in the table. I'm a Muslim tech speaker. That basically means like something like a community de uh, dev evangelist, uh, which is basically uh, Mozilla helps me uh, with travel and lots of arrangements and resources. Uh, if I talk about topics that Mozilla cares about, which is basically every topic uh, connected to the open web and uh, uh, is a very nice and generous offering in general. I'm also doing a bunch of JavaScript and hardware stuff. Uh, if you ever heard of Tessel, I'm working with the Tessel, uh, bringing some features on. I'm mostly working on the Rust uh, support on their board. Tessel is basically a Node.js, uh, a, a, a MIPS, a tiny MIPS board that runs Node.js like out of the box. Uh, so that's about me. And the whole idea that uh, they're going to be talking about it basically came a year ago, year and a half almost. Uh, we had this thing called Happy Code Friends back in Hungary when we were teaching people basic web skills, HTML5, CSS, and realizing that teaching uh, JavaScript in a weekend, much less one day, much less one afternoon, is kind of a hard undertaking. Uh, mostly not just because people uh, don't really get, you know, why are you trying to stuff variables or groups and whatever is down to their heads, but, but also because of the resources are not almost there. 
Uh, you can get a bunch of resources and teach people like the basics of HTML and CSS in, uh, in an afternoon, and they can they can continue on if they they you know you manage to touch that they, uh, they can uh, take them from there and use online resources and some mentoring and get really good at that. JavaScript not so much at least uh, unless uh, you want to count uh, JavaScript for cats, which I love and adore. Uh, yeah, there is this thing called JavaScript uh, uh, for cats. Uh, you search for it. It explains JavaScript in very simple layman's terms uh, for cats and also for the hum human uh, counterparts. Uh, it's made by the wonderful Max Abgen. And so, so, so there are a few few uh, resources, a few and far between, but but there. Are, uh, there came the idea uh, that we are going to be uh, teaching people web development by uh, letting them create a game. This was the very first mock-up of what I imagined back in the days. You're going to see how much, how far we went, how how far we gone. Uh, it's basically, hey, you can you can you can create a JavaScript game in pretty easily uh, with some uh, pretty. This is basically like a hundred lines of JavaScript code uh, that you see on screen. Uh, that is pretty much uh, a workable game-ish like thing. You know, uh, people that like like blinking LEDs and you know create your own website and shit. Uh, but uh, it's not the kind of creation that people are after. That you know, when you're creating with Legos, for example, when you're creating with Legos, you you create something that wasn't bef there before and something completely new that is only bound by your imagination, that kind of create, the, the, that kind of feeling of creation and creativity uh, is hard to come by when you're, you're trying to teach people uh, JavaScript. Uh, so this is, this, is, this is not easy. Like, uh, this was not an easy job to get up on us. Uh, so this is how Cloud Boy came around. How Cloudaway came around, I, I'll spare you all the history and more than go right into it. Basically, uh, I was playing around with this uh, little device <coughs> that I'm going to show you in a moment. Uh, if you ever knew this, uh, or if you are uh, just as much as a junkie of Kickstarter as I am, uh, this is called the Arduboy. Uh, it's basically an Arduino hooked up to a screen. Uh, a few buttons and a piezo, uh, piezo beeper. Uh, people went crazy about this, and the Kickstarter campaign sold like 10,000 of these. Um, the idea was that this is basically an Arduino uh, hooked up to a screen. So the moment, yeah, uh, just you know, for size, like this is this, uh, like basically a credit card size thing. Uh, basically, inside of it, it's an Arduino micro microcontroller. And you know, when you uh, everybody who buys their the first microcontroller, be it an Arduino or a Raspberry Pi, go home, you know, blink some LEDs, do some tutorials, uh, measure the temperature of their cat or something, <laughs> and then yeah, yeah, I'm like that happened. Yeah, no, no, I don't own a cat, so so. Uh, I was experimenting with other guests. No, uh, but seriously, uh, and then you, 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 you stuff it into the drawer. Uh, unless you can you know, convince your boss that you can create a, something like, you know, that shows a flag when your bill goes red, something like that. Uh, but that is, where, uh, as, as far as most people go, a bit harder. And like, I mean, I'm not kidding. Uh, I mean, I'm just half joking because that was me as well. Uh, my very first thing uh, into hardware land was a few years ago with Tesla in the very first place. And if it wasn't for JavaScript, I wouldn't have done too much with, with, uh, with hardware anyway. Uh, me neither. Uh, but actually with uh, JavaScript, it, it gets a lot easier in a lot of ways and a lot harder in a lot of other ways. Uh, but we were going to try to uh, taper over those, those hard ways. So the idea was uh, about the Art Boy is, hey, this is just an Arduino. Uh, you can just download the Arduino IDE, it's free, and just create games for it. And people would create free games for it, upload them to GitHub, and you know, profit. Everybody can download a gazillion of like, free games. And it was a good idea. It, it, it almost worked. You know, you know what the almost part was? Uh, it wasn't GitHub, it could have been, but it wasn't GitHub the, uh, the almost part. The almost part was, how do you program games in the Arduino editor? You know what, what I'm talking about? Do I have this? Yeah, I have it here. 
Let me let me ju just start it up for you. Just remind you how do you program games in the Arduino editor? Yes, thank you, Windows. <laughs> well, this is just half of it. Uh, is that is that familiar for somebody? Do you know what that is? That is C and C plus plus. Great games with C and C plus plus. And here's the problem. Everybody would love to create games, right? The problem is not a whole lot of people know enough C and C++ to create games, much less do, enough, uh, do they know enough C and C++ to create games for a microcontroller that's 16 megahertz, and uh, that is actually pretty good. 60 megahertz of speed. It has two and a half kilobytes of memory, 2,560 bytes of memory, which like, 30% of it is already taken by the uh, OS that you already flash onto it, like the bootloader issue. And 30 kilobytes of uh, flash RAM. You get 30 kilobytes uh, to create something usable, like something that resembles a game on this device. So here's the problem. A lot of people in their spare time love to create games. A lot of people in their spare time uh, who know C uh, I love to create stuff, uh, but it's very hard to convince people to churn out hundreds and hundreds of games out of them, try to optimize them down to the minimum, bare metal, uh, for them to be able to run on this device, and, and then to upload them for free for anybody else to grab, you know? And it almost worked, uh, but like the games weren't coming really. And I was like, yes, because of the barrier of entry. You, you want to lower the barrier of entry. This goes, you know, I'm telling you this about this particular game in Arva. I'm not bashing Cap. Uh, 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 this, this was a super good idea. The execution, there was a slight problem. This was a slight problem. This goes for your super good idea of uh, Kickstarter, creating a company, uh, creating IoT, and being the next... Uh, uh, whatever insert uh, uh, famous person here. Uh, this goes for everyone. You know, they, they uh, mistook uh, the good idea for a good eco ecosystem. And for a good ecosystem, you need to have a low barrier of entry, so, so supply. Uh, uh, if you ever heard of this tiny startup called Apple, they have this programming language called Swift. And the, this tiny startup who's super, super, uh, they're super secretive about their uh, uh, intellectual property, they open source their number one programming language. Swift is going to replace most of Apple's offerings in whatever it is uh, there is going to take to, to create programming, uh, to create uh, programs for their, most of their devices. Why? Because they realize they cannot miss on, uh, cannot miss off on first on the ecosystem, cannot miss off on all the people uh, that want to use your language and want to use your programming language. And open sourcing a programming language uh, is not just going to give you uh, uh, free work, people f uh, working on your stuff for free. Uh, it also gives you that, but most importantly, it brings you people uh, being aware of your thing, being like thinking more about your thing, like being uh, this kind of ecosystem thinking even poisons the big apple, uh, not the, that bad, that big apple on the east coast of the US, but the other big apple, uh, because you have to lower the barrier of entry to create an ecosystem. So that was my idea. Hey, I want to lower the barrier of entry. How do I do that? <laughs> well, or do you know editor is terrible, so I want to make something that is mm, easy, uh, easier to use. So here's the thing. Uh, I'm gonna try, let me just quickly show you the very simple game I made. Kind of waiters, not here. Let me see. Not sleep. Not now. Oh, there you go. Let me see if I have flasher running. Yep. And let me see if I can 
should have preset this up so we are not spending a lot of time with this. Let's see if this works. Oh yeah, it works. No, that's not the one. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Oh no, of course it's not the one. Ah, uh, let's try this again, shall we? <coughs> Alrighty. Ugh, come on, compile, compile. Well, it wasn't my uh, in my dream of dreams. I was, were dreaming about uh, giving a talk with two computers in front of me. Like I have enough gadgets, anyhow. All right, there you go. Ta-da. Ah, there you go. Now we are talking. So focus. There we go. So we get we get some game running on this. And my first thing was okay. So I'm gonna create a editor uh, that is going to make. Uh, it is easier for people to create games in C++ because one, there is one thing about C++ syntax and query extension. Uh, the other thing is, you know, when you have, when you want to create, do I still have open? Yeah, I still have it. So this is how, this is basically how a, a game looks like. You know what these zeros are? These are binary comp compiled images. When you're creating stuff for the web, you just load a PNG file, right? And you have a sprite, an image. When you're creating stuff for a microcontroller that has 30K of memory, you're not, <laughs> you're better not like loading a 30K JPEG on it, right? Uh, so how they do it is basically, this is a pixel graphic map of all the pixels <laughs> that are lit on a, uh, on a particular sprite and all the pixels that are not. So I'm going to show you again. So, so this is how it looks like. So to achieve this kind of image, you need a, a whole bunch of zeros and ones. So I was like, okay, that sounds terrible. And there are all kinds of tools on the web that you can upload a PNG file and like screw around to get like these hex codes. And then you still don't know what the hell those hex codes are. So I was like, let's, let's start here. So I created a, a, a editor that was pretty good at images. And if you scroll down, so what you see here, this is the source code of the game you are seeing. Uh, what you will see is this is a 160 lines of, uh, uh, of C code. This is already the C code. I'm gonna show you the JavaScript, but let's not get ahead ourselves. I, I still have five minutes, so we have plenty of time, right? <laughs> so here's the thing. I was like, okay, so let's create this thing. Uh, if, you, if I go in here, you will see these are still the same uh, binary images, right? These are still the binary files that we have been talking about. The only change is actually uh, my editor uh, loads these images and it does what a computer do, uh, does well, con uh, transforms from the binary data into something that's visual, something that's more understandable to humans. Not just that, it actually explains you what those cracks cracks mean. So if you go into there, you will see uh, that as you scroll through the image, it will highlight all the columns. Uh, basically, every byte is eight pixels. Uh, eight bits uh, will serve you eight <laughs> pixels. Uh, basically, eight columns. And it will let you know, you know, if I'm gonna edit this here, like I'm gonna say, I just zero this row out, the column out. And, oops. Oh. See, the demo gods I've been talking about. Oh, come on, no, no, this is not the jam. In any case. Oh, there you are. Okay. So it actually deletes the right, uh, line of code. Let me see if. Alright, now we are talking. So I can edit this and see it changes the image as well. But I don't want to edit like the image manually. That's not what I put the whole thing up into a web browser, right? I want to use my fingers or you know my mouse or my, my other devices. And come on. Okay. I'm in the middle of a huge refactoring, so a bunch of people a bunch of things are not gonna work. Let me see. 
Oh, there you are. So that's why I made this view. You just click the image and, you know, <laughs> redraw the image however you like so. And it will just do and do the conversion, do what, does what computers do well, converts the visual image into something that the tiny microcontroller can understand, something optimized, something compact, something, something that computers do well. So if you go into there, you will see it's a different thing. Uh, it was nice, it was good, it, has a few, it had a few perks, but it wasn't enough. Because you know what, C is still C. And C++ is still C++, uh, and teaching uh, C++ as the first language uh, for someone who you haven't seen any programming languages yet, or even programming in it itself, is not the best of uh, the ideas, at least the, according to me and a few of my friends. Like, you can argue with me, but don't at me. Uh, so the idea was, hey, actually, look at this code. I mean, this is pretty much JavaScript. I mean, it's not JavaScript, but I mean, <laughs> You know, you, if you squint it off, and <laughs> it, it can kind of, you need, you need a few seconds or rather, you know, what's your poison? But uh, after a bottle of whiskey, it looks kind of JavaScript, right? So I was like, you can actually create this thing in JavaScript and transpile it to, to, to C code and then flush it to the device. There was another thing, you know, I made this code editor and it's fun. But, you know, if I wanted to see how my game looks like, I needed to compile it, I needed to flush it onto a device, I needed to screw around you know, for 15 seconds, for, for 20 seconds, you know, for those who use Webpack, this is not a problem. Uh, but if you, if you are kind of used to the old school web, then you just you know, update a file and reload the page, you know, hit F5 and it just works. That, that is kind of like a hassle. So I was like, okay, so, if I actually made this in JavaScript, that would, you know, that would serve like both things. I could do it in a language that is more accessible than C or C++. And also I could just preview the whole, whole damn thing in the browser because it's just a browser. It just shows up. It just runs JavaScript. So the thing I came up with is called micro canvas. It's basically translating the job. Uh, a, it ha it, it's like a library. It's a tiny library that uh, follows closely with the, uh, with the HTML5 specification. It's basically an extension of HTML5 Canvas and lets you create all kinds of things. Uh, that is basically all kinds, mostly games. And then later, there is actually a compiler I'm working on. Uh, there is not a full-fledged you know, JavaScript to C compiler, but it can compile a subset of uh, JavaScript and a subset <coughs> of your games into, uh, into a C code and then flash it onto the device. So this is exactly what you are seeing. If I'm gonna see, click this preview button, this is exactly what you have just saw, right? It is exactly the same game. It is exactly the same thing, except it runs in the browser. And there's no emulation here. There's no, you know, I'm running a Java, uh, a C interpreter or like compiling like to WebAssembly or anything like that. No, this is pure JavaScript code. Uh, and an HTML5 canvas, which you can even try yourself because it runs on your browser, so you can upload it to the internet. So you can just type a URL and use it <coughs> in your device. So if you try this URL, whether it's a laptop or your mobile device, you will see a slightly upgraded version of this, and I will, uh, that will get me to the, to the special edition uh, Invaders game I have today. And just while you are playing around with this, let me open, uh, there is a new version I'm working on of this. The new version of this is actually uh, using the, uh, you, uh, the, has some upgrades that I'm happy to show you on the device itself because it's more fun like that and hopefully hex file coding meters as g flash so oh let's not talk about the whole thing that everything is compiled in the cloud so i'm working on one computer it compiles on the cloud it actually uh, the compiled hex file downloads to this computer which uses uh 
uh, Electron JS and Node.js serial port to put uh, the compile image into the device. Oh, it's not, let's just not talk about this thing. But basically, uh, what you're gonna see, so I have the uploaded, uh, updated, oh, there you go, the updated uh, game uh, that you're gonna be seeing with a bit of extra flashing onto the device, hopefully. <laughs> so, well, I'm not sure if I can win this here. Uh, I will try. No, 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 no. All right, all right. It's it's fast. Ta da! And. You know, it is the same thing, because it's just the web. Oops, this is not the thing that I wanted to show you, or is it? No, what happened to my game? Seriously, this is terrible. <coughs> I know what happened to me. No, 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 not here, not here. Not here. Oh, come on. Okay. <laughs> this is our... so-called demo guys, right? All right. Uh, I'm not going to get it to work, but it's okay. Uh, before we go, uh, here are the links. And just one more thing. You know, I've been showing you a bunch of devices, and my favorite one I didn't even show you, but not today, I, I can show you this one as well. Uh, so, let me... Uh, so I, I, I show you a bunch of devices, right? And, you know, I've been giving them a, a good publicity for some time, so, so that's fine. Uh, and... <laughs> and I've been giving them a good publicity for some time, right? Uh, but you're like, okay, okay, but how, how does this get, you know, uh, what, how about uh, teaching people and stuff? You know what? Like I told you, that Arduino device, uh, that Arduino device is basically just an Arduino, a, a button, and a few other stuff hooked up to a breadboard, and I'm going to prove it to you. <laughs> because this is basically the same thing. <laughs> oh, uh, by the way, this is another game. I guess you know this, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this is about that. If you want to talk to me, uh, like a whole a whole bunch of stuff is open source, or at least it's gonna be once I uh, once it lo uh, looks better than a monkey's butt, uh, which I'm working on. Right so feel free to check the slides. That is talk.flag.is slash play. Uh, at Cloudaboy is the uh, tweets. If you want to, uh, there is an email list. You can sign up if you want to know more about this stuff. And uh, I hope you enjoy this. Thank you. Thank you. So in the interest of time, if you have questions, you can take this offline. Um, and we have, like, say, time for one announcement if you want to give it.